I want to thank you for coming to my webinar, really introducing 401ks and 403bs to you. So I want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, I have been working on and working with companies and employees who are involved in these plans since about 1993. And so it's been a big focus for me in helping folks to really achieve retirement over time. So why are 401ks and 403bs, if you have the opportunity to participate in these, why are they so important? Well, one reason is because on average, Social Security really only replaces 40% of your income. So you got to make that other money up somewhere else if you want to eventually retire. So it, could, it also could be an IRA, but this, this presentation is really going to focus on 401ks and 403bs and corporate plans. So when you're looking at retirement planning, there's lots of stuff to think about, and it can seem really complicated. However, we want to make it you know, as easy as possible for you um, in saving for retirement. And that's why 401k plans um, and 403b plans are really good. So the press, sometimes you'll see some negative things about 401k and 403b plans. Chances are, if we didn't have those around, um, the retirement gap between what people would need and what they'll have for retirement would be even greater. So basically a 401k plan, a 403b plan, or retirement programs that are offered by a company or a not-for-profit or other organization really for the benefit of the employees. And generally it's a way to save money pre-tax or post-tax with Roths that we'll talk about in a little bit directly from your paycheck. So the money, once you sign up, it goes directly from your paycheck. You don't see the money. It just goes straight into the account. So who can participate in a 401k or 403b plan? Well, of course, first you need a company or an organization that's sponsoring one that you work for. Okay, it's really, these are really work-based plans. If you are self-employed, you can also set up kind of a solo 401k or solo 403b plan. And generally the eligibility, and eligibility means when can you get into the plan? That's gonna differ by your organization, your, the company you work for. Generally, you need to wait for a year, be a full-time employee and be 21 years of age. But again, you need to check with your company specifically to see um, if that's what their criteria are. So why should you participate in 401k plans? Well, again, automatic savings. That's the best way to build wealth over time. It's just having money going in every paycheck period. It's kind of like, if you think about a mortgage, it's kind of like this too. You're paying off your house every single month and eventually you own this big asset through good and bad times. So also with a 401k plan, you get tax savings. So if you put your money in pre-tax, it grows tax deferred, you pay tax eventually, but right now you do not owe tax on the money you're saving in the plan. There's also potential for matching contributions. So not every company or organization, but many will match what you put in. So let's say for example, that you put 1%, let's say you put $100 a month into the plan some companies might match $50 on your $100 or $30 on your $100. Every company would be a little bit different. There's also compounding interest. So over time, as you put money into the plan and it's invested, that really can help it grow into a much bigger nest egg. Also, the funds, the mutual funds in these plans are professionally managed. So you have managers that are there that are able to help um, to make sure that the money is treated well and taken care of in a professional manner. You also get to direct your own investments. So you'll be able to pick which funds out of the menu that you have. It's kind of like going to a restaurant, you'll have a menu of all the different funds you could choose from. You can pick those on your own. And I'll talk about some shortcuts here later on in the presentation, because that can be a little bit onerous when you look at a list of 20 investment options and you're not really sure what's there. Also, it's portable. So any money you put into this plan, you can take with you when you leave that company and roll it over when you go to retire. So how much money should you save in the plan? So the rule of thumb is really to start saving about 10% of your income from the time you start working until you retire. Okay, so it's quite a bit of money. Um, I say you save as much as you can without curbing your current lifestyle. And if you're not hitting the 10% initially, you know, raise it up 1% 1, 1 per month, or sorry, 1% a year. Um, you just really want it to be on autopilot. Okay, so we wanna make sure that you have the option of retiring in the future. 
you know, maybe New Year's resolution each year is to take a look at your finances and see how much more money you can put in there. If you get a bonus, putting more money into the 401k. So in 2021, the limits for money going into a 401k are pretty high. So it doesn't matter how much money you make, as long as you make over the maximum, generally you can put this amount in. And again, you'll need to check with your specific uh, situation and your tax advisor to be sure of this. But if you're under 50, you can put $19,500 in. And if you're over 50, you get an extra $6,500 you can put into the plan. So the most that you can get into the plan if you're over 50 years old in 2021 is $26,000. And these numbers every year are reviewed and adjusted for inflation if inflation does go up. So these are just some rules of thumb as far as savings are concerned. We talked about the 10%. So when you're starting to work, putting 10% of your annual pay is usually the least amount that you want to go in, okay? In your 30s, if you haven't really started saving a lot yet, maybe up to 15%, 40s, 20%, 50s and 60s more, okay? There's a lot of different calculators from many different websites. Um, if you need any help with those, I can help you out. And basically, um, to see if you're on track or not. So if you don't start saving until your late 30s, you may need, to put, may, may need to put more money in in order to meet your goals, okay? So everyone's gonna be different with the amount of money they save and what their goals are for retirement. So when you save money, generally you would go on a website or fill out a form to say how much money you wanna go into the plan every payroll period. There's really two ways to save. You have regular 401k contributions where you put money in before it's taxed, you get tax deferred growth, and then you pay tax when you take the money out at retirement, okay? So let's say, for example, if you wanna save $100, then if it's pre-tax money, you might only see like an $80 difference in your paycheck. And that is um, you know, based on what your tax rate is, okay? So everyone's gonna be a little bit different. On the Roth side, you put money, if your company um, allows for that, you put your money in after tax, that same $100 after tax, and you may see like a $120 difference in your paycheck. And then that money grows tax-free. And at the end, you actually take it out federal tax-free. Okay, the, the account has to be, you know, in force for five years or some other rules around that. But generally speaking, you pay tax either now with a Roth or later, and you get the tax benefits along the way as well. So let's, what if you need to get to your money before you retire? Now, one thing I will say is that in doing this for a lot of years, there are some people that use their 401k plan as kind of like a Christmas club or a savings account. This really is a retirement account. So I'd caution you against taking money out. But if you are under 59 and a half and you take money out, you will pay a 10% penalty. That's a federal penalty for the government because they really want this money to be there for retirement, okay? You need to check with your company specifically, but you may be able to take 50% of your vested account balance out as a loan. You may be able to do a hardship withdrawal for certain purposes, for example, education, healthcare, eviction, things like that. Um, and then there are, once you turn sometimes 55, 59 and a half, 60, 62, 65 in your plan, sometimes you're able to take money out. Okay, so hopefully you're looking at this as a long term. Um, program, and you won't need to take money out before you need to. But if you do, there are ways to get to your money. And every plan, again, is going to be a little bit different. So we talked about the employee side. So you're putting money in. I did talk a little bit about the match. And a match is if you put an X amount, the company will give you a certain match, certain portion of that. A very common match is that if you put 6% of your salary in, they'll put in 50% up to 6%. So if you put if you save 6% in the 401k, they'll put in 3% for you. Okay, it's very common. Not all plans match, um, but that's the most common match across the country. There's also a profit sharing contribution, which doesn't, you know, the company doesn't have to necessarily make profits to give the contribution in, but usually that is, that's a, a, the a amount of money that goes into the plan for every eligible employee whether you're, put, whether you're putting money in or not. And some companies have these and some don't. So you need to check with your plan to see whether they put these monies in or not. Please also know that matches and profit sharing can be discretionary, which means that the company may choose from year to year whether they, want, whether they can or want to put those monies into the plan, okay? So you can see if you have a company or an organization you work for that's matching 
and doing profit sharing and you're putting money in and the market's going up, you can see how this account can get very large fairly quickly. Okay. So, but there's no guarantees, of course, with that. Now, when you look at vesting, vesting really just means your ownership of the money that's in your account. So when you go online and look at your account, you'll see your account balance. You'll see what you put in. You'll see what the company put in for you. So your money that you put in is always yours 100%. So if you leave, you take that money with you, okay? The employer money can be subject to a vesting schedule. And again, every plan is different here. So the maximum vesting schedule is you own that money after six years. So if your company or your organization puts, let's say, puts in, let's say 3% of your compensation, every year after two years at a six, six year graded vesting schedule, you would own 20% of the money they put in three years, 40, 60, 80, and then after six years, you own 100% of what the company put in for you. Okay, so check your company to see what their vesting schedule is. And that just really just means ownership. So basically, um, when you're looking at contributions into the plan, normally um, it would be mutual funds, which target date funds and asset allocation funds are also can be different types of mutual funds. Okay, so basically you would choose which options you want to go into. Now, most plans have a default option. So if you don't choose a fund where, where your money should go either on a physical enrollment form or when you go to enroll in the plan online, there usually is some fund that is a catch-all fund that takes money if you haven't made a decision. Okay, it's called a default investment option. So basically, you want to take a look at what your needs are specifically, and I would work with your own financial advisor or a plan representative to see which mutual fund mix might be right for you. There's also target date funds, and what that means is that if you're going to retire in 2040, you would pick the target date, the 2040 target date, um, or the date of the fund that clearly closely um, represents when you want to retire. Okay, and then asset allocation funds are more risk-based. So for example, they're not gonna be a specific date when you retire, but one might be conservative and might, one might be very aggressive and then some funds in between so you can pick what you like the best. So one thing to look at is asset allocation. And asset allocation, each one of these target date and um, asset allocation funds would be invested a little bit differently and they would have different portions of stocks, bonds, and cash in them. Okay, so just see what your, there's usually worksheets you can use to see what your risk tolerance is, or again, talk to the representative um, on your plan. There's also a beneficiary designation form. So let's say something should happen to you or maybe your spouse during your lifetime where, you know, what happens to the 401k if you pass away? So I would recommend filling out a beneficiary form. Now, Beneficiary form, if you don't fill a form out and you are married, that money automatically goes to your spouse, okay? Otherwise, it would go to kind of your next of kin, but you want to make sure that it's, it's, it's left to the folks that you want. Mostly, if you do not want the money left to your spouse, they would need to sign off on the form in order and have it notarized in order for you to leave it to someone else, let's say your children or what have you, okay? So... When you look at beneficiary forms, you wanna have them for your 401ks, your IRAs, any annuities, life insurance, or any other type of insurance type company programs, like a pension even. Um, you wanna make sure that those beneficiary forms are up to date. They supersede anything else. So even if your will says, I leave my 401k to Bob Jones, if you're not married to Bob Jones, it doesn't matter what your will says. Either way, it's what the beneficiary form says. It does not matter at all. If your beneficiary form was completed properly, whoever that's left to is who gets that money for all of these different programs. Your will is really where you would designate where you want real estate to go, retirement, non-retirement, non-insurance type of accounts and assets and personal property and some other like collectibles and some other things like that. Okay, so, so it's very important to understand but the beneficiary designation form really takes precedent over everything else. So that's a brief primer on 401k, 403b, and corporate retirement plans. Um, it's really important for you to, to, if you want to have a successful financial future and to really maybe have the ability to retire one day, is to take a look at all this, do some projections and see where you stand. 
And what can you do today to move further toward your retirement dreams? Okay, little steps make the journey easier and really can help you to make it there much better. This information that I presented, it, again, is really general in nature. So if you want specific help or have specific questions, please reach out to a financial advisor. And here is my contact information. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to this webinar. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out um, via email or by phone. Thank you for your time.